Rich Maysana with Pristel Aircraft. And what I'm gonna show everyone in our uh, Pristel Nation here is what we found to work the best for keeping that nose wheel steering uh, fork to have just slight, um, slight resistance as opposed to it being loose. Uh, we found if it's loose, you could have some shimmying you could have premature steering cable uh, failure, and um, we want to try to eliminate that. So I'm going to show everyone here as to how we uh, have found to just keep a little bit of tension onto the nose wheel uh, steering fork, and um, we've had very good success with it. So the first thing we need to do is take off all of our, uh, our upper and lower cowling. We need to remove the fairings around the nose gear arm and have the nose gear to look just like this. Now this particular unit is what we call the dual cable system. The dual cable system has two Teleflex cables that operate in a, in a push-pull method that um, BRM Aero came out with in the early 2018 era. Um, we can convert your single cable system to this. Uh, it's um, a little bit of an extensive job, uh, uh, but it can be done. We've done several of them here, um, but it's basically removal of the arm, the fork, and your rudder pedal bars inside the aircraft. After we get our nose wheel uh, area like this, what we need to do is go to the back of the airplane and either have a tie down point in your floor or we use a weighted five gallon bucket filled with uh, cement. This seems to work quite well to keep that nose gear up off the ground so you can do any kind of uh, nose gear related service. So what we'll do is we'll attach this and once it's attached, now we have our nose gear up in the air. And what you'll see generally speaking is when this is on the ground, you're going to see a little bit of play in this top washer. And what we're trying to do is eliminate that play. So in order to do that, uh, the first thing we need to do is remove both steering cables. With that, as you can see, we have our tools here necessary to do the job. Uh, we have a needle nose pliers. We have a side cutter, screwdriver, 19 millimeter wrench. We have our pull scale, arbor shims, which we're gonna use, and we have a digital caliper and another <coughs> cotter pin that we'll have to replace with the one we remove. So what we'll do first is we'll mark where the cotter pin comes through. And then that'll be exactly where we want the cotter pin to come back through again. So that's step one, we'll use a paint stick or a permanent marker for that. We'll let that dry. We'll get our screwdriver. And now we need to pop off our retaining clips for the nose gear steering, which you can do with a screwdriver. Just a half round clip that goes into a hole there's the one comes off and now the rod end can be moved from the ball and we'll do the same thing on the opposite side if you have the dual set up
Now, what we'll have here is both of these up and you can see how we have some free play here. How we measure this, come on this side, is we take our scale, we set our scale to zero, and we measure it. If we look at the first hole being a screw hole, second hole, third hole, this is where I found to measure what we're getting. So if we hold up our cables and we pull, we take an average reading from two or three pulls with the cables out of the path. And we can see on this that we're showing just under three pounds of pull. What we found to be optimum when we do our inspections is between eight to 10 pounds. So in order to get between eight and 10 pounds, Okay, we must pull our cotter pin out, pull our nut off, and insert a shin under the nut. So, to help you guys out, what I've done, um, and this is something that uh, you should do, is get uh, cable ties or wire ties and go through the rib nut of the bracket, and you can hold that cable up out of the way. So, free falling or free spinning, you don't have to try to hold it with your hands. And if we do that, you're gonna see on our uh, scale here, I mean, it's, it's about one pound, maybe two. So this is, you know, I had said earlier, you know, around three or so, but it's, it's definitely more so around one or two. Um, again, target point is eight to 10. So what we're gonna do is we're going to take our cotter pin out after we had it marked here. So once your cotter pin's out, keep in mind um, the hole is gonna be right there with the red mark. I use Arbor Shims. Um, I sell these or you can get them from McMaster Car. The UPC number is 84140. They're stainless steel Arbor Shims. What I found is that we gotta go pretty light so the larger ones, um, the, the thicker ones are gonna be too thick. So we wanna pull out the, the, the light ones first. And we're gonna take our calipers and we're gonna measure them. So this one is 0.36 millimeter. This is a bit of a guessing game. This is 0.07 millimeter. It's on the small side. 0.49 millimeter. I'm gonna kind of step these up in case we have to do a couple different tries here. Here's 0 0.18, 0 0.05. Hey, this is point, uh, 0.02. So I'm gonna go with um, this guy first. This is the, the, the on the thicker side, 0.34. So what I'm gonna do, this is gonna be most likely too thick, but I just wanna show you what we're gonna see here. I'm gonna stick my foot under. Higher. And we're gonna twist off our nut. And just so I can show you 
<clears throat> how this system works is that basically the shaft of the fork goes up through a recessed bronze bearing here. And that's due to the weld that's on here. So the brand new aircraft, this will actually start to wear into your fork. So that's what this shim is gonna be taking up. So we put this washer on and, and you're gonna see as well, when you take your washer off, if it's old enough, you'll start to see wear in there. It's sacrificial, it will wear. So we're gonna put this shim on. Keep in mind, we have our red marked nut. We want that red marked nut to be exactly where our hole is. Put a cotter pin through, and now we're gonna see how tight this is. Now, I kinda wanted to go to the extreme to show you guys how little we're dealing with here. So, right now, that shim, I'm pulling about 18 pounds. 20 pounds, average of 22 pounds. So that shim, which was 0.34 millimeter, which is uh, 164th of an inch was too big, okay? Normally what we find is that the shim we're gonna need to put us in the eight to 10 pound range is probably about half that, like 128th, uh, 0.17 or even less. But we're gonna go with this 0.17, okay? So we're gonna put this 0.17 on. I suspect this will probably put us right around 12 or 15, but we'll see. Keep in mind, we always have to go back to the same starting point or else what we're doing is not gonna help. And the reason why we can't just go one more castle is because it's too tight. It'll be way too tight and it'll put way too much friction on this front nose wheel be hard to steer. So with this one, I'm seeing actually, after several pulls, eight to 10 pounds. So this particular shim on this system is working out pretty good. And this is where we would leave it. So this shim was 0 0.17, 0 0.16 at 1 28th uh, of an inch. So this shim is gonna work really well for this application at this current time. What we've been finding is that after 100 hours or so, um, you could need to either add another small shim to this or uh, just replace the shim itself. But again, what we found to be the good target is eight to 10 pounds. After we get it back together, again, test it. I'm seeing about eight, eight or nine pounds, which is what I found to be the best. Basically put everything back together in reverse order and away you go. Uh, so this is, uh, this is what we found to be good tension here on the nose wheel. It should also help with some of um, uh, higher speed uh, taxi issues. Um, and um, we, we've also seen it could help with keeping uh, your ball centered in coordinated flight uh, 
with your with your nose wheel pan. Um, again, this is wearable. It's going to continue to wear. Uh, that's why it needs to be properly shimmed. And if you start to feel any shudder or any excess wobble, um, check this using this procedure. And um, don't overinflate your nose wheel tire. Uh, we've been finding that. Um, 20 to 25 pounds works really good. I've got some customers that like to run between 16 and 18 pounds. Um, again, it's we don't need to have this nose wheel tire at, at 30 pounds, um, especially for some people who like to uh, hold the aircraft on the ground much longer than it needs to be, or when they land, um, they drop the nose when they're still um, traveling, um, you know, over 35, 40 knots or, or, or so. Keep this nose wheel off the ground upon landing um, as long as you can. Let the aircraft aerodynamically uh, break, let the nose wheel come down when it wants to, which generally is right around uh, 25 knots or so. Um, any questions? You can reach me uh, on your base camp project or rich at bristelaircraft.com. Thank you very much.